So today we will be processing a sponge sample. The reason why we're doing this is because we are interested in the symbiotic bacteria that actually form uh, within sponges. Uh, our hope is that we'd be able to get the, the bacteria as we're, we're actually hoping that the bacteria produce uh, secondary metabolites, which are possible drugs that, that we can actually use in the pharmaceutical industry. Now, to be able to get at the bacteria, we have to take our sponge sample and uh, cut it up. And once we're done cutting it up, well, you're going to see as the process proceeds. Okay. Now, you have to, it's important to remember that since we're interested in the bacteria within the sponge, we have to try to keep everything as sterile as possible. We don't want to find ourselves working with the bacteria that are maybe lying all over the place, like on your bench or something. So, which is the reason why we wear gloves, which is the reason why we try to keep everything sterile. Like our missile and porter, our, 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 our missile, missile and mortar, sorry. Were, well, we had them autoclaved to ensure that they were absolutely sterile. So what we're left with is, uh, well, the, the liquid bit of the macerated sponge. Each, in each vial contains about nine mils of um, sterile, um, sterile artificial seawater, which we intend to use to prepare our cereal dilution. Now, as you can tell from the labels, um, our concentrations are going to range from 10 to the power minus 1 to 10 to the power minus 6. Now, preparing them is relatively simple. All we do is prepare 1,000 microliters of our sponge extract. Place it into the tube labeled PE8, 10 to the power minus 1. And ensure that it's well mixed before we proceed to prepare it. a thousand microliters or one mil of that into the next vial labeled 10 to the power minus 2. We prepared another 1,000 microliters from this vial and prepared it to the next one. What we've essentially done is we're doing tenfold dilutions as we're moving from one vial to the next. So, this stage, we've prepared our serial dilutions of our sponge extracts. So we're going to proceed to inoculate 100 microliters of 
um, each dilution onto an agar plate. So what we proceed to do would be to take 100 microliters of um, the solution in the vial and put it on our on a particular agar plate. Now, as you can see, we've got quite a number of different uh, agar plates and media. So let me start over here. These two um, flasks contain uh, liquid media for which is specific for photosynthetic bacteria. Um, these different agar plates, um, shown labeled R2A and SEN and ZB and so on and so forth, are supposed to be for our their general uh, agar media for a diverse range of uh, bacterial uh, species. Then we have the, the actinobacteria, which is a group of um, bacteria that are well known to be producers of secondary metabolites, among other things. Um, the media that is, that is here is, is supposed to be selective for those. And finally, we've got um, the low pH media, which is, which is over here, labeled TSA, pH 4.5, and the high pH media, labeled pH 10. So this is supposed to be specific for um, acidophiles and uh, alkalophiles, respectively. Yeah. Okay, so we will proceed to inoculate um, the agar plate with the solution that is in our vial, which is our sponge extract solution. We're going to flame our glass rod, which we're going to use to spread the solution that we just put on our agar plate. So the rod was immersed in ethanol, which is flammable. So we just pass, we pass the rod through a flame and then uh, give it a few seconds to cool to ensure that it doesn't kill our bacteria before we start spreading. And then To ensure that the entire 100 microliter volume that we have prepared onto the plate is spread throughout the agar plate to ensure a uniform distribution of, of the bacteria, of the bacterial colonies rather. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how we go from our sponge living somewhere in the ocean to our isolated bacteria, which may or may not produce our secondary metabolites.